The Simpleton's Guide. Hello, and welcome to The Simpleton's Guide, because simple is better. Today we'll be talking about author and environmentalist icon Rachel Carson. For most of her career, Carson was a biologist with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, but she's best known for her popular 1962 book, Silent Spring. Today, she's credited by many with being the inspiration for the modern environmental movement. The central message of Silent Spring was that agricultural pesticides were being overused and polluting the water and soil. The title refers to what she saw as our possible future, a landscape so laden with the toxic byproducts of modern agriculture that entire species of wildlife, like migrating songbirds, would end up dying out. She especially singled out the pesticide DDT for criticism. While Carson did have a legitimate point about the overuse of pesticides, the campaign against the use of DDT started by her book went on to have a devastating impact that she couldn't possibly have foreseen. As it turns out, DDT has two important but very different uses. First, as a broadly deployed pesticide on farm fields to kill pests that eat crops, and second, as a narrowly targeted insecticide used around homes and buildings to kill disease-carrying insects, like the mosquitoes that transmit malaria. As more and more people in the U.S. grew alarmed at the frightening predictions of cancer and other health threats made in Silent Spring, DDT became more and more politically unpopular. Eventually, despite little to no proof of any human health threat, the Environmental Protection Agency banned the use of DDT in 1972. The results in the U.S. were relatively minor. Large-scale farmers turned to other pesticide products to replace DDT, many of which they continue to use today. The impact on the rest of the world, however, was far more dramatic. Emboldened by their victory in the U.S., environmental campaigners sought to eliminate DDT use around the world, not just for spraying on crops, but also for use against disease. As it turns out, DDT was, and is, one of the safest, most affordable, and most effective tools for fighting malaria, a disease that still kills over one million people a year. Because of its reputation in the U.S., however, its life-saving properties have been overlooked in the rush to ban any potentially dangerous chemical. Since the 1970s, nations around the world have been pressured by environmental activists, international aid officials, and politicians in donor countries into not using DDT to fight malaria. Public health experts have estimated that abandoning DDT in favor of more expensive, less reliable alternatives has contributed to the deaths of millions of people across the world, with a particularly heavy death toll in the poorest, least developed countries. What started out as legitimate concern about pollution from farms in the U.S transformed over the years into an irrational demonization of a simple chemical compound that could have saved millions of lives. Fortunately, there is some hope. Official opinion has started to turn, with the World Health Organization recently endorsing the narrow, limited use of DDT to fight malaria. Coupled with an array of other pesticides and barriers like screens and bed nets, the reintroduction of DDT should soon start saving lives around the world. The Rachel Carson legacy and the DDT story offer us an important lesson. Even the best of intentions can go awry when we let our emotions get the better of us. It was easy for activists, mostly in wealthy Western countries, to call for a global ban on DDT and feel good about it. After all, it wasn't their children who were dying of malaria. And that's been The Simpleton's Guide to Rachel Carson and DDT. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep it simple.